Hi guys and welcome to project 4 of the data series. This project covers four sections, data exploration, modeling and model optimization, and for this episode I plan to use a gradient boosting algorithm called LightGBM that was developed by Microsoft. And the model optimization method I plan to use is called Bayesian search, which we covered in a previous episode. We also cover model evaluation by looking at the confusion matrix and precision and lastly, feature importance. The objective of this project is to build a model that predicts the potability of water. And by potability, we mean whether the water is safe and clean to drink. So the inputs of this model are the pH of the water, the hardness, solids, chloramines, sulfate, conductivity, organic carbon, trihalomethane, turbidity, um, and the target variable here is the possibility. So whether it's safe and clean to drink, um, which would be indicated by one, otherwise it's not safe and clean to drink, which is indicated by zero. So this is a binary classification problem. So here I have a notebook that I would like to take you guys through that goes through the sections that we mentioned earlier. So first we import some libraries. So here we're importing pandas, um, which can help us with importing the data into Python. We also import NumPy here to help with any mathematical operations, uh, warnings, and Seaborn. So we import warnings um, to ignore warnings that might pop up, and Seaborn for any plots. So these are the libraries that I tend to use in most of my projects, so I just tend to import them um, right at the start. So it's always a good idea to explore our data a little bit to know what it looks like. Um, and here I'm reading the data using the pandas library, and I saw the data as a CSV file uh, called water possibility um, and I'm reading this data and I'm storing it under the variable name df and to get an idea of the number of rows and columns we can use this uh, shape method here and after applying this we see that we have 3276 rows and 10 columns. A quick way to check the first few rows of our data just to see what it looks like is by using this head function here on our data frame um, and applying this we see our first few rows and we already noticed straight away that we have a few missing values. It's always good to check the data types of our columns to make sure that they're suitable um, to be inputted into the model and here we can use the dtypes function for that um, and after applying that to our data frame we see that all of our columns are either a float or an integer and that's okay there are no strings so our model should be able to read this data. So next we can check for missing values and here I'm summing all the null values in our data frame, and this is organized by each column. So we can see here that pH and sulfate have quite a significant number of missing values. It's always a good idea to check the distribution of your target variable, and here I make use of the Seaborn library and produce a count plot, uh, specifying that I want to look at the portability um, column, which is our target variable. And we see here that the data is somewhat balanced, there are fewer potable cases than non-potable cases. Since the classes aren't significantly uh, imbalanced, this hopefully shouldn't cause too much of an issue. So the next section here is about data pre-processing. So for this case here, there is no need for data standardization. Since we are using a decision tree based um, algorithm, decision trees work by splitting uh, data by a certain rule. And there is no need to put our data on a standardized scale to make these splits. We also don't need to uh, remove missing values since LightGBM can handle these missing values. So here we split our data into a training and a test set. And for this case, we're using 90% training data and 10% testing data. So here I'm defining our input data here as X, which is all of our columns except uh, portability. And so we're dropping that and we're indicating that it's a column that we're dropping um, and so we have the axis set to one and our target variable here is portability which we can define using the following code so df.portability and once we have decided on our inputs and our target variable we can make use of this train test split function from the scikit-learn library and here we and here we're applying this function uh, to our input and our target variable we're setting a test size to 10% and therefore a training size to 90%. And here we're doing a stratified uh, train test split. So that means that our test data should have the same proportion of 
uh, potable and non-potable water as our training data. And here we just set the random state to ensure that each time we run this code, we get the same uh, testing and training data. The framework for training and testing our model is as follows. So first we split our data into a training and test set, which is what we did in the data pre-processing section, where we use a 90% training set and a 10% test set. We then construct a model on our training set by using um, cross-validation, and more specifically, um, Bayesian search cross-validation. Uh, and, and lastly, once we find our best model, and that's the, that's the model with the hyperparameters um, that yield the best performance, we can then use this model on our test set to see how well this model performs. So now that we have done some data exploration and data pre-processing, we can now go on to do some modeling and model optimization. As mentioned before, the algorithm for this project is called LightGBM that was developed by Microsoft. To give a brief overview on how this algorithm works, usually gradient boosted tree algorithms, when trees are built, they're built what's called level-wise. So nodes are split until um, an entropy of zero is reached on all of the leaf nodes, or a certain hyperparameter is reached, such as the number of leaves or the maximum depth. With level-wise tree growth, this splitting occurs very systematically, splitting each of the nodes um, level by level. Another way in which we can grow these trees is something called leaf-wise tree growth. Instead of splitting leaf nodes level by level, we first identify which leaf node can we split that will result in the maximum change in our loss function or the maximum reduction in our loss function. Once we identify this leaf, we can then make the split. And this can, and this can result in tree structures such as these. This is also done with um, the number of leaves held constant. In light GBM, it's set by default to 31 leaves. So once 31 uh, leaf nodes are built, then the decision tree uh, is completed and then it'll move on to either building another decision tree or stopping there. So we plan to optimize this algorithm using Bayesian search, and we focus on optimizing just three hyperparameters for this project. And that's the number of estimators, which is the number of gradient boosted trees, the learning rate, which controls the model variance and bias, and also the maximum depth of the tree. And here we're using a scikit-learn implementation called LGBM uh, classifier. We can then define the hyperparameter space over which we want to optimize. So here we make use of different functions such as integer and real, which we've imported from the skopt library. And here for the number of estimators or the number of uh, gradient boosted trees, we're looking at a range between two and a thousand. For the learning rate, we're looking between 0 0.0001 and 0 0.5, and for the maximum depth, we're looking between uh, two and five. So since learning rates can take uh, real numbers, so like decimal places, for example, um, we use the real function. And since you can only have an integer number of trees and an integer maximum depth, we use the integer functions for these. So these essentially just produce uh, the space. So for example, integer two to a thousand will be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all the way up to a thousand in which we can sample from um, for Bayesian optimization. And the same applies to the real function here. We can then initialize the Bayesian search function. So Bayes search CV, which you have imported from the SK opt library. We define our gradient boosted tree model, which is like GBM, uh, which we initialized up here. We give the hyperparameter space, which we have defined here in this dictionary. We define the number of folds for cross fold validation. And here we chose a number of five. We set the scoring method here, and here we set it to um, the area under the curve score, the number of iterations to 100. If you can, try to increase this, but it would take um, more time. And this is the number of iterations that Bayesian search goes through to optimize the hyperparameters. So we would expect as we increase this number, um, the hyperparameters become more optimized. And here we set a random state to one, um, just to ensure we have consistent output. And it's the same here. We set the seed equals to one um, on the light GBM classifier to make sure that the outputs are consistent as well, as there is some randomness uh, involved in light GBM. We can then fit uh, the initialized Bayesian search on our training data, and lastly print the hyperparameters that led to the best score, and also print the best score. 
And after running this, it might take some time. And if it does, you can perhaps try to reduce the number of iterations. Um, we get the following hyperparameters. So a learning rate of around 0 0.02, maximum depth of five, number of estimators to 458. And the best score that we obtain is around 0 0.66. And that's the area under the curve score. So after we have found these hyperparameters, we can then train a new model on all of the training data uh, using these optimized hyperparameters. So for this, we use our already initialized light GBM model, and we can use this set params method to set the hyperparameters um, of the model. And here we just simply put in the hyperparameters that were identified by Bayesian search. We can then fit the model on all of the training data to produce our final model, which can then be evaluated. So now that we have fit our final model on our training data, we can now go ahead and evaluate our model's performance. So first we can generate a set of predictions and here we're storing it under the name y underscore pred and we call our model and we call the predict function here and we generate a set of predictions from our test data. We can then produce a confusion matrix and for that we can make use of two functions from the scikit-learn library one called um, confusion matrix and one called confusion matrix display. Um, there is also another function called plot uh, underscore confusion underscore matrix, I believe, which I think I have used in previous episodes. So I believe this um, function is now being depreciated. So we make use of these two functions here. First, we feed our test labels and our predicted labels into the confusion matrix function. And we store the result under CM. And lastly, we can then use the confusion matrix display and input um, CM into this function. And the output here is stored under display. And then we can lastly um, plot this display here, which gives us our resulting uh, confusion matrix. Since we're dealing with a model that has an objective of distinguishing between clean and safe water to drink and uh, dirty and unsafe water to drink, it's important that the model has a high precision. So that means that every positive prediction, so every sample of water that the model uh, says is clean and safe, we have to make sure that the model is, we have to make sure that the model is actually true and that these are clean and safe water to drink. So here the metric that we are focusing on is called precision. And we can find the precision of this model by importing the precision score function from the scikit-learn library. And for this, we input our test labels and our predicted labels. And we see that the resulting precision is 0 0.6875, which in my opinion is not that high. Um, and I would not be happy to put this model um, into production or anything like that. This last section here is quite short and it's about feature importance. So once we have constructed our model, we can interpret the model and try to find what features were more or less important in predicting safe or unsafe water. And here we can make use of the plot importance method, uh, which LightGBM provides. And here it calculates the feature importance. And this is done by looking at how many times a particular feature was split. There are also other methods in which um, feature importance can be calculated, which perhaps I can cover in a future episode. From this model here, pH is the most important factor in predicting um, safe or unsafe water and turbidity, the least important feature for that. Thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you learned something new.